How sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now. was grace that taught my heart to fear grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils, and snares, have already come. Was grace that brought us safe as far, and grace will bring us home. Amazing grace. <clears throat>17 that says if you receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness you will reign as a king through this one Jesus Christ uh, so firstly I want to I'm going to be giving a couple of definitions that I've picked up over the 30 years that I've uh, studied the scriptures and that I feel will uh, probably uh, give you a new and a fresh understanding of grace, the grace of God. Many people think um, they have, they've been born in a Christian community or in a Christian uh, or in a religious home and they say, um, I've got a Bible and I go to church and further I don't really know what's going on with the Word and the Bible and whether I actually even have a relationship with God. But you know what? Through the grace of God, I'm okay. I'm safe. I, I'm going to be saved because the Bible does say by grace you, you have been saved. Or by grace you will be saved. And then they say, oh, they, they just trump everything with this word. Oh, grace. God's grace is sufficient and, and so on. And they think that this is... Um, going to be like a ticket to heaven mental mental ascent but you know just to have some mental ascent just to have something in your mind this word grace is going to save me and you know grace is not a cover up grace is not god's ability to put up with your sinfulness and if you're going to use grace in that fashion you're going to be one of the people that the bible talk about that says do not frustrate, do not use the grace of God in vain and do not frustrate the grace of God. We're going to also look at these uh, verses. One of those are Galatians 2.21. It says, I do not set aside the grace of God. So do you understand, can you see in this piece of scripture that you can actually Put aside the grace of God and lose your salvation? Do you realize that this can happen? Do you realize that you can get shipwrecked in the faith? In other words, you know, the, the ship isn't taking you to heaven. Do you realize that you can use the grace of God in vain? And that word in vain is the Greek word dorian that means to no purpose. 
there's not going to be a purpose, neither going, there's, no, go, there's not going to be a reward. There's not going to, without just cause, you, it, it's just failing. It's going to be so unnecessary. It's going to be for nothing. So you're going to try and like be religious, hoping to go through life, trying to be religious or have a form of godliness but without power. You know what? Paul actually writes in the scriptures, it's, he says, turn away from such that, 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 that has a form of godliness but without power. So I want to... I want to, let's just carry on here with Galatians 2.21. It says, do not frustrate the grace of God. And that word frustrate means to make it void, to make it empty, to reject it, to refuse it. So if you say, I'm a frustrated person, then you are, then you are saying, I, I'm rejecting life or, uh, or I'm refusing things in my life. That's the, 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 the word. Athetio in the Greek, to do away with something laid down. So if you say I'm frustrating the grace of God, you're saying I am not using it, I'm, I'm not interested in it in it anymore, I'm rejecting what God has offered by grace. Now, let's just understand one another very clearly this morning. The grace of God, firstly, is a gift of God and I would I would equal it or I would 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 liken it to a motor car God gives you a, a, let's say God gives you grace grace is a, a is a motor or let's make it um, a, 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 a four-wheel drive gear in a vehicle if you just have an ordinary vehicle, you will not be able to ride in the wilderness. You won't be able to go over rocks and through the mud. You'll get stuck. And then you're not going anywhere. And that's when you start, start frustrating the grace of God. If you get stuck around every corner and you can't move and the vehicle isn't going anywhere. But with this grace gear, you can put that gear, you can engage it and you can use that gear to move on and to carry on and that's exactly what grace is grace is a god-given ability and the gear to be able to thrust you forward and to make you able to move on through uh, right through unto the heavenly land unto salvation so uh, do not be deceived grace is not god's ability just to put up with your sinfulness as if grace didn't amount to anything or as if grace never, uh, um, uh, never, as if grace, grace never achieved something. Grace is everything that God did. G-R-A-C-E is God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is what God did to make you an overcomer. Grace is something what God did in Jesus Christ and through the cross and the resurrection that makes you alive in Christ, that places, that, that, that gives you the, the opportunity to place you into Christ. It, it, is, it, it, is, uh, it is beyond comparison. It is the unsearchable riches of Christ. Uh, it is uh, the... The, what, the culmination of the cross of Calvary. It is the, it is the full appropriation of the, of the legal implications of the cross of Calvary. If you do not use it, you frustrate it. And then, you'll, you, uh, um, and then you may receive the grace of God in vain. If you receive the grace of God in Christ, and you just walk and say, oh, I'm still a sinner, I can't get myself to live a better life. You are busy frustrating the grace of God. Paul says a very bold statement. Now remember, Paul was Saul, who was a Pharisee. And, and he used to, he, uh, Paul used to go and persecute the church. He was a Pharisee, uh, he couldn't, uh, he, did, he had no tolerance for these, the way, the people that was of the way, the people that was living uh, the real Christian life. And he was a religious person and they, uh, they, uh, they, um, 
and he actually went to go and uh, try and wipe out the church. So, and then he makes a statement in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 11. He says, but by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace uh, towards me was not in vain. For I labored more uh, abundantly than everybody else. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Now just listen to this. He says, but by the grace of God I am, uh, I am what I am. Now, th th this doesn't mean I am just a sinner uh, saved by grace. It means I was a sinner. Listen to Romans 5. That means he has embraced the grace of God and he has, has, has allowed the grace of God to change his whole life. Uh, Romans um, for Romans 6 says, uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Can, can we might just carry on sinning? That's the whole point of this whole grace gospel. It, you've got, it, it, it brings you to a crossroad where you've got to make a choice. Either you're going to live your own life or you're going to receive Jesus Christ and start changing your whole life, your whole route. You, it's a crossroad. You're going from uh, in, into an entirely different direction where Jesus Christ comes and indwells you, where you become born again, you, where you repent, get baptized, become born again, and start off with a whole new fresh life. And then you can say, if any man be in Christ, because through repentance and baptism you are placed within Jesus Christ, and then in Christ you are a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you become, like the song that, that I sung, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So then you come into the salvation a vehicle. And, and, and then you need to stay uh, in the parameters of this grace, you, you need to stay in this, let's say it's a train, you need to stay on that train, or else if you climb off on a station, or if you hang out the window, something can happen, and you can, uh, you can fail, and you can, uh, b uh, you can be disqualified. So, so you must stay in Christ, abide in Him, and then you will eventually, ultimately be saved. So, so um, it says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died in sin live any longer in it? So here is a radical uh, verse of scripture that says that God deals with sin. Grace is God dealing with your sinfulness, with the sin nature. Now people will say, what are you saying? So you say that you're perfect, you do not sin. Uh, how can you say this? We're all just sinners, you know. That, that's what people, how people reason. My friends, listen to me. Grace deals with sin. And when you come into Jesus Christ through repentance and, and uh, uh, baptism, God places you in Him. That's Romans 6. You can see here. It, let's read on. It says, um, Or do you not know? That as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, were baptized into His death. So, uh, therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also might walk in newness of life. Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also will walk in the newness of life. So grace means that God gives you a new path and it's called to walk in the newness of life. Now, uh, uh, to walk in the newness of life means that, that scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. 
behold, the new has come. So what grace actually does, it, it's, it's a, a miraculous uh, uh, a work of God that renews you. It renews every part of you, every, every, every relationship, every aspect of your life. It infuses God's Spirit into everything that you do. And then it becomes this new life in through you. And I call it, Galatians 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. So it, it's, a, it's a, a burial through baptism. It's a burial that takes place where you actually die. The old Dries dies and the new person in Christ rise. Uh, it, uh, raise is being raised up into newness of life. So grace is a very, very powerful, uh, a very powerful definition. It's a very powerful word, and it's a person. Grace is is Jesus Christ. When you want to look at grace, you must turn to Jesus Christ because you must turn to the scriptures because it it explains to you that Jesus Christ was full of grace and truth. So if you want to know anything about uh, grace, you need to go and read the scriptures. Go and read the New Testament and see what grace entails. See what God wants to give you, what, what He wants to interpret, uh, what He wants to, to speak to you about grace. Um, here we see that grace is a very, very powerful uh, thing. Uh, it, it deals with sin. You no longer have the excuse to live a lesser quality life. You can start uh, um, taking authority over the sinfulness, the sin nature in man is being dealt with in Christ. That's why the cross was the biggest, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cross was the biggest work of God, of re the biggest work of redemption, that God did for the human race. And it is sufficient to solve the sin problem. If grace didn't solve the sin problem, we would have still have been uh, wretched. We would have been uh, um, lost, blind. But with, 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 the, with the redemption that, wa that was given to us in Christ, we can become... Uh, saints, holy, sanctified, righteous. We can, we can be changed to be like 1 Corinthians uh, 1 verse 30 says of God are we in Christ who have become for us wisdom. We, you, get, you get wisdom, uh, uh, has become for us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption. So righteous, you, you, God places you upright where you were upside down. Uh, um, you were living a wrong, sinful, blind, uh, um, unholy, ungodly life, but God places you upright, you become a righteous being. And you, righteousness is the ability to enter the presence of God without inferiority complex, sin consciousness and guilt. Isn't that wonderful? These are miraculous terms that... That you, can, that you come to and that changes your being, that changes your life.